him to training last night for the first time and um, basically said hello to the players and Cliff explained what my, you know, what my, what I'd be doing and uh, what part I would play at the club and yeah, hopefully you know Saturday will be the first game that you know, I'll be at the club and hopefully progressing. The um, team forwards. Would you would you say it was a constructive uh, training session last night? I made Tuesdays and um, and I obviously couldn't make last night, but Tuesday seemed to be uh, really constructive. Yeah, again, you know, I think when you when you go into a new club like like clicking into a new club, now it takes time to to uh, know what players you've got and what players' capabilities are, and to to see where you're strong and where you're weak, and you can't just go in and you know make changes straight away you have to give everyone the time and uh, the chance to show what they can do and I think that's what Clifford's done with a couple of ideas not too many and the same yesterday again run over a few things a few patterns of play a few free kicks and uh, sort of be ready for, for the game against Farrock um, Over the last sort of year or so there's been a lot of changes with, with Habib Swift so obviously Mark Hawke's got the job at Chelmsford City so, so that opened up the opportunity uh, for Jody Brown to come in he'd taken the club to the, the playoffs and this season has been a complete contrast uh, to, to finishing the playoffs uh, looking from an outsider point of view looking outside inwards has it been a bit of a, a roller coaster watching the sort of um, exploits of Habib Swift's over the last yeah. year or so? Yeah. From yeah. a sort of non-league local perspective, there must be a lot of clubs thinking, wow, what a whirlwind last year that football club's had. Well, yeah, I mean, like I said, when because I, I was manager of Chesnut, obviously, as you know, um, and we played Habib's last year uh, twice. I think we, we drew 2-2 two, two at our ground and I think we drew again at Haybridge and you were you know you're a good team and you played some nice football and well I'm not sure if it was I wouldn't say nice football but you played football in, in the way that got you to where you needed to be and to see where, where they are this year it, like you say it's a total contrast but it, it, it seems like it's a it's a familiar thing in non-league one one year someone's flying the next year you know they're, they're uh, somewhere else so it's not like it's anything uh, that hasn't been seen before yeah, and um, obviously Cliff got off to the, the perfect start with a, a victory. I mean, some people might think, was that the sort of new manager syndrome coming in and suddenly you get an immediate victory? It doesn't always happen. But in terms of this Saturday, the, the opponents tomorrow, Thurrock, they're fifth in the table, uh, flying. They've been unlucky to be demoted over the last couple of seasons and find themselves in, in Ryman 1 North. They didn't come too far off going back up last year. They can't be taken lightly, can they? No, definitely not. And again, once again, um, you know, I've, I've, when I manage Chesant and I, I know how Burrock play, they're a disciplined side. They wear teams down. They're, they're patient, um, and they they could beat you in the last minute of the game. You know, they they, they stick to their to their tactics and their um, their the way they play. And um, like I say, if you're not on your game and you're not working hard and you're not disciplined and you're not doing all the things that you need to do as a team defensively, um, then they will punish you. So, but you know, Thurrock, like you say, they've they've got probably one of the biggest budgets in the league, um, and you know they've got Mark Stimson there, who's an experienced manager, and it won't be an easy game. I mean, I watched the Chatham game that you you recorded. Um, I watched that the other day and saw, you know, Haybridge does play some nice football that game, but Chatham weren't really uh, at the races uh, that that game. So it was this is going to be a totally different, you know, a contrast to to the Chatham game because Burrock will be organised, they'll be disciplined and they'll be patient and we need to we need to be the same really. Um, in terms of yourself, do you um, hope at some point that you'll, you'll be back playing? Uh, somebody told me that you'd got a bit of a, a knee injury at the moment. Well, yeah, I ruptured my cruciate um, in May playing for the Arsenal uh, charity team, which I've done for the last three or four years. Um, and I'm just coming back, well, I'm at six months now. I, you know, I've done some running last night after training on my own, um, strengthening my leg, and I, I don't know. You know, I'm hoping, I'm hoping I'll be back within, you know, another two, three months. Uh, um, but you can't tell how these how these things sort of flare up or, or don't. So I need to, you know, keep progressing the way I am. And um, yeah, obviously I want to play still as well. You've you've had sort of twenty years in the game. It must be frustrating to to stand on the sidelines. A, a Cliff's also having to stand on the sidelines at the moment. And I I know he told the players on Tuesday that he'll be pacing up and down as much as he can and sort of 
kicking every ball for them, but it must be frustrating when you know you can still contribute on the pitch, but you're forced onto the sidelines for a little while. Well, yeah, I mean, I scored, um, you know, I scored 18 goals and set up, I think, 21 last year for Cheslin, um, which was, you know, quite good stats, which is, I should be doing still, for, you know, for the level that it is and where I've played and, you know, I've been in the pro game a long time. So not playing is, is frustrating, but, you know, eventually we have to take that transition into into the coaching and management side of things, which I do want to do. But as you know, if you can offer something on the pitch as well, which Cliff can, he's only, I think Cliff is only 30, what is he, 31 now? 31. Um, you know, he, he still can score goals at that level. He was playing a little bit higher than where he's playing now. And he's taking this transition into coaching and playing as well. So the, the plus side of it is I can't play for another two, three months plus anyway so Clifton get on the pitch and focus on playing and I'll be on the sidelines um, bossing him about <laughs> I think he might be 33 but I'm sure he'd take 31 but if, if I'm wrong then it's custard pie in my face <laughs> is he 33 he might be I don't know um, he looks about 43 so you know you could, you could be right um, yeah I know I'm older than him so um, I didn't know I was only two years older than him uh, but I'm, I think he's only 30 maybe 32 but anyway it's here nor there he can still play um, and we can both still play when fit so that's got to be a you know two strikers that have played at good levels um, it can only be a bonus to the team really and we just need to make sure we, we get everything right at the club and everything running smoothly uh, Cliff's got uh, Gavin Dawes coming in as well. Is that somebody that's familiar to you and, and, and you know him and, and know what he can bring in as technical help? Uh, Gav, yeah, I knew Gav when um, we've done some coaching uh, sessions and things like that together. Um, and I know Gav used to play at, play at a few clubs and he's been he's been doing the agency work uh, for a while. So he will bring, you know, he'll bring stuff to the club which will help, you know, in respect to players and just making sure things are running smoothly. So, um, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure everyone's going to have their um, their uh, their part to play. Um, in terms of the strengths that all three of you bring, it it just looks on paper and it looks sort of initially quite quite formidable. Is that how you want it to be perceived by everybody? And because um, that sort of formidable force of all the strengths put together could propel the club um, away from the relegation zone <coughs> this season quite quickly. Well, you know, it, you'd like to think that's the case, but it, you know, we haven't we haven't spoke about that, or we haven't, you know, we haven't really. Our main job is to make sure that Haybridge are playing playing in an attractive style of play, winning games, and um, you know, doing doing well. I mean, I've not made no secret that you know I was manager of Cheshunt, and I do want to get a manager's job, um, and Cliff knows that as well. So, I mean, I'm just finishing off my A license now. Um, I've finished my part two and I've only got to be assessed really now. So, um, yeah, I, you know, I want to progress as well and I feel that I can help Cliff uh, as it stands at the moment and it will, I can get on my coaching as well. Um, but, yeah, you know, you can't really say the people that have come to the club, hopefully we, we, we offer something that, you know, makes the decision that the, the chairman's made a good one. And in terms of, of youth players coming through at the under twenty ones ranks and, and going further further down the pyramid, is that something that you're keen to um, to progress um, through to the first team wherever you might find yourself? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know that's vitally important, especially at these non league levels. That was a problem I had with Cheshire. You know, I kept banging on about you know you have to be able to have the right setup in order to be able to bring players through. And it seems like Haybridge have already got a good setup. They've got a good twenty one is running. Uh, which I saw them training last night, and it's important that if players can step up, then but they're stepped up, and if they're not ready yet, then they just keep progressing where they are. But yeah, that is it's very it's a very important factor, and it's one I I, I do take quite seriously. And um, obviously, you've been we've mentioned where you've been in the game twenty years. You, you started with Arsenal, whereas Cliff started at uh, at Chelsea. He, he's told us about his experience at Chelsea, and he was uh, alongside John Terry. Matthew Upson, uh, where did it all begin for you and, and who were the people that w you were around when when you were at the Highbury Stadium? Well, you know, obviously I, I, I was at Arsenal from the age of nine and I played I played all the way um, all the way through to, all the way to I think 20 years old when I managed to break into the first team and, you know, get a couple of appearances or be involved with a couple of appearances here and there. 
I played with great players. You know, I trained. You know, I trained with. You know, the likes of. I don't really like to, to you know talk about names all the time, but it's you know, Dennis Bergkamp and Mark Overmars and Tony Adams and Ian Wright and um, Nicola and Nelka and you know Paul Merce. No, we had the great squad at the time, and I mean they, we won the championship. So, and it was nice to be part of a to come through the youth and win a lot with the youth as well. Um, and then, you know, I moved on to West Ham. Now I went, went to West Ham for three years after that and was in and around the first team again. And again, we had a great squad. We were, you know, at that time, we had probably the best English players in the country. You know, Rio, Frank Lampard, Joe Cole, Jermaine Defoe, Michael Carrick, uh, David James. You can just read them all off, basically. Um, and then I've, I've gone abroad and played at Travis on Sports. So, yeah, I, you know, I think you know what my career is. Um and, you know, I've had the opportunity to play in Europe and score goals in Europe. And and now it's my time to try and give a little bit back. And that's what I'm trying to do. You know, educate myself as a coach and try and become a good manager. And uh, a little One bit day. of Champions League experience. Cliff mentioned that on Tuesday when he was introducing the fact that he would be introducing you to the players uh, on the Thursday. And he mentioned, well, I'm bringing somebody in. He's got a little bit of Champions League experience. That must be something not only to be proud of, but something that if you, if you can take those experiences from the last 20 years at all sorts of levels of football and go and work with young players and, and non-league players, um, that's something to be proud of and they can look up to it and go, wow, I'm I'm working with this person and they want to help me. Yeah, I mean, I think I had that. Uh, obviously, I do say, you know, I played in Holland, I've played in Turkey, I've played in England and I've taken different aspects of different parts of the of the, of the world um, and I tried to put that into my coaching and into my philosophy and my tactics. Um, and I think, you know, if you asked anybody at Chesham, any players at Chesham, they'll tell you sort of, working under me and they enjoyed their time under me. They enjoyed playing the style of football that they played. Um, and we were professional and it's important that just because you're a non-league team, you don't act in a professional manner. And that's what we have to, you know, bring to Haybridge if it's not already there. If it is there, then brilliant. Um, and we need to progress it. And that's what we what we need to do. And you hit the nail on the head when you said, you know, basically being able to, to give that to others now, for me, is, is very important. Um, going back to the the Arsenal experience, um, um, what's your um, what's your opinion of how Highbury looks now? Have you been at, been able to have a closer look at the the development that they've put on that old stadium? Uh, the only t- the only time when I've gone to the Emirates, of course, I've se- I've gone past Highbury and seen I've not seen inside, but obviously the Marble Hall side is all still there, looking looking as nice as it ever did. But um, I haven't had a chance to go and look inside. That is what it is. You know, this is the world today. If things can be developed um, and, and money can be made from it, you know, and everyone can benefit, then that's what happens. But yeah, uh, I suppose they're nice apartments and the Emirates are a lovely stadium. And, um, you know, we don't need to really say much more about Arsenal, do we? They are who they are. They're, a, you know, they're an exceptional club. So in terms of Cliff starting at Arsenal, you starting at Arsenal, um... Uh, Cliff starting at Chelsea, so are you starting at Arsenal? And, and Gavin has obviously had experience with the development squad of, of Spurs. Can we expect some attractive pre-season friendlies come July? Um, well, you'd like to, you'd like to hope so. I mean, it is still difficult, you know, to get to get clubs to come to um, to Ryman North at, at these levels. But I mean, this year I managed to get, you know, Wickham and uh, Southend and. Uh, not South End, sorry, South End was cancelled, but um, we had Welling United and we had um, Dagenham and Redbridge through people that I knew. So it'd be nice to be able to try and get fixtures like that pre season uh, and even higher, you know, if, if we can, we will try. That's all you can do, really, isn't it? And, they uh, say yes or they say no. The Christmas period, what, what do you think um, is the best instructions to, to give players at this time of the year, especially when, when there's a game on Boxing Day, uh, two hours before. It's normal kickoff time when people are are drinking and eating quite a lot on Christmas Day. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's one of those things. Not just at you know non-league level, but you know professionally. I think uh, you shouldn't really have to say much to anybody, it, whether it's Boxing Day, whether it's Christmas Day, or New Year's Day, wh- whatever it is. You have to play a match, and you can't go overboard on what you're doing because inevitably you let your team down, you let yourselves down. Um, and you can't afford to do that whether you're a non-league player or whether you're a professional. Well, definitely, certainly not a professional player, but non-league, it's the same for me. You're going out on the pitch 
to show your own self and play for your team. You can't afford to let people down by um, overindulging in alcohol and food. <laughs> well, well, just leave that to the media team then. Yeah, we leave that to you guys, and you, hopefully we'll, we'll all be on the ball for, for Boxing Day. And um, Is it New Year's Day? Do we have a game on New Year's Day? I think we do have a game on New Year's Day at, at Ilford's Ground. Uh, all right, OK. So it'll be Barking, barking side. Barking, OK. Um, yeah, so basically we need to be ready and our players need to be ready as well. Um, in terms of uh, your, your career, who would you say has been a sort of great influence on you when you're coming through... Um, coming through as a youth teamer and then into um, football at all sorts of levels? Um, an influence. I mean, when I was growing up, I was always told to watch Ian Wright. But being that sort of player, that sort of striker, you know, Don Howe always used to say to me, Omar, I want you to watch Ian Wright today. Uh, watch his runs, watch his movement. And, you know, um, I, I did that. Um, you know, but there was players at the club at the time, like Dennis Burkamp, who... You know, it, it speaks for itself in what he was able to do, and you, you know, you admired the way he played and um, tried to put parts of your game, put that into parts of your game. Uh, there was players abroad when I was in Turkey, as I was sort of, because I was only 22, 23, or 23 when I went out there. Um, but you wouldn't know that sort of um, that I, I picked things up from and learnt from, and um, you know, so there's there's a variety of players that I've. I've, I've picked things up from and learnt from, but probably Ian Wright, as I was growing up through the youth, um, through the youth ranks at Arsenal, was who I probably watched a lot of the time, or was told to watch and learn a lot from. Now, looking towards the top of the table in Ryman North and looking towards the top of the table in the Ryman Premier, there's uh, a club virtually at the top of each division that doesn't play on, on grass. Would you see that as a way forward for, for non-league football, the way Maidstone and Harlow have gone? Um, well, it seems that it's going that way more and more. The way the weather is getting in in the UK, because it is getting worse through through um, the, the winter periods now, and a lot of games have been postponed and waterlogged or or, or hard or frozen. Um, and it's it's a possibility that a lot more a lot more clubs will have artificial surfaces. I mean, I think the surface is good. I don't have a problem playing on any surface. Um, now, if you could keep grass, obviously, I think it is. For me, the best surface to play on. It's true. It's you know, it's uh, it's just natural, and it's what we've been brought up on. But artificial artificial pitches now are becoming you know the way that they're put together. There, I know they've got a sort of semi now. They've got a, a synthetic and and grass mixed together at the top clubs. That might be something that the FA reels out or is able to fund. I don't know. Um, but yeah, you know, it does look like. Those clubs, they get their games on over Christmas. It's better financially for them. Um, it's consistent. They can, you know, I'm not sure whether, you know, Harlow play the football that they should be playing uh, at Harlow on that surface. I'd be getting them playing total football. Um, but, you know, your surfaces are good and it's, um, it can only be a, a beneficial thing, really. And, Especially uh, for training and stuff like that, you know. Yep. But once you and Cliff and, and, and Gavin and, and everybody else that's helping behind the scenes sort of get get settled in at Haybrid Swifts over, over the next few weeks and what have, what have you, do you believe that you'll have a, a lot of strength to be able to, to market the club to to players as well as looking at what you've got and, and trying to develop them and, and keep them if, if you want them and they want to be part of it? I think definitely the style of play... The way in which we would we want to play football, players will want to do because I see it like this. You know, players are playing at this level. Um, you, you, if you don't enjoy playing football in a certain way, then there's no point in. They go to work, they come on a Tuesday and a Thursday, they work hard in training, they come and play on a Saturday. If you're not playing a style of football that you're happy with, which which the way we play, the way I want them to play, the way Cliff hopefully wants them to play as well, is you, you can't not be. Um, sort of happy with it so in that respect that will be uh, one reason why I, I, you'd think players would come in obviously knowing players and knowing people at, at clubs will maybe help um, but inevitably you know yourself um, finances is a, is a big factor in, in the game today and players uh, want to be paid um, to basically get to and from and, and to survive so if, if, if everything's right I don't see why not, but there are there are factors which do affect uh, what we're talking about. 
OK, um, let's just uh, give something back to the fans now. You might need to spend a few moments thinking about this, but um, yeah. is there something that you can tell the, the, the Habeas fans out there and maybe everybody, a, a, a sort of factoid, if you like, um, something not a lot of people know about you? Is, is there something that uh, not a huge number of people know about you that you could uh, tell everybody? Uh, is there anything anyone knows about, that don't know about me? A huge factor. What? What would that be, Dad? Anything that people wouldn't know about me that uh, I can tell them as a fact? What do it in hell? Give me. Have, have what you are you looking any, for? Have you got any <sighs> pre-match superstitions or um, pre-match superstitions? Not any, really. Any rituals? The right boots got to go on first. Or? No, no, no. Nothing like. That. I don't wear dirty pants right until we lose a game or anything like that. Um. Will you want the? Um, will you want the? Um, will you want to do what Arsene Wenger did and turn the away dressing room into a very negative, negative shape? I think that's. I have. I think yeah, that's I have. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Um, no, nothing really like that. Um, let me think. Like you say, you need time to think about that. You've hit that. You've put that on me, and it's like <laughs> you've caught me cold. Um, you won't be coming. Uh, in with, uh, you won't be coming in, knocking down walls, and saying this away dressing room is the uh, 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 the wrong shape. I, no, no, I don't, I'm not. I'm not a feng shui guy or anything like that. <laughs> um, no, I can't think of anything to be honest with you. I really can't. So, anything unusual? Anything unusual about my career or anything unusual about? Anything, anything I'm unusual just a about... I'm just a boring guy. <laughs> what? You, I mean, I don't know what else. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I, think I think I've lost myself on this one as well. Um, is, there, <laughs> is there a is there a car perhaps that you dream to drive or own that you you haven't ever driven or, or owned? Mm, nah, not really. I'm not that sort of not that sort of uh, what do they call that uh, superficial sort of guy. I'm not that. I'm not like that. Um, is, is there a, is there something that you would you would love to undertake like a, a challenge that you you've set yourself uh, or I was, uh, or <laughs> no, I wouldn't do hang gliding or jumping out of an aeroplane or anything like that. No, that sort of stuff. I wouldn't risk my life for for that. There's well, no point. Be, um, you won't be parachuting into the ground on Boxing Day. No, no, I won't. No, no, no. I wouldn't. I don't put no risk on myself unless I have to. <laughs> um, what, Dad? Anything, Dad? Do you not think of anything? You must know something. <laughs> I really don't know. If I think it's out, I'll tell you. I'll ring you up and let you know. Yeah, okay. How about that? No problem. Yeah? Um, yeah when, fair. when you were at Arsenal, were there, were there players with a lot of superstitions? Of have you, have you, and When you've been in the dressing room at various clubs, have you found a lot of players with superstitions where they've, they've got to be the last one out of the dressing room or the right socks got to go on first? Or? No, not really. Not really. I've not had any... I, I had, <laughs> there was one guy in uh, a Trabzon sport uh, called Fatih Akio. He was uh, basically played for Galatasaray when they won the European Cup. And and every time you, if you'd done this, like, we, we all realised, we all found out that he had a a twitch, but it was a copying twitch. So if you um if you'd like pull your shorts like pull your short leg, he would do it. He'd copy you. Or if you banged your heel on on the other heel, he would <laughs> he would copy what you were doing. So um we would all be doing it, and he would he knew that we finally we finally knew what he was doing, and we'd all do it, and he just couldn't help it. And he'd like end up chasing us around around the place to stop us from like making him from twitching. It was that was quite funny. Um, but uh, no, nah, not how, how would you how would you describe yourself as a as a dressing room uh, character, as player, and as a sort of a coach and a manager type uh, person in terms of being around the players in the dressing room and trying to get them g'd up? I think I've always sort of been sort of uh, a character um, wherever I've been in respect to the player. You know, but before games, I've always been focused and quite quiet and concentrated myself um, before games. But in general, I've always been, you know, a, a little bit of a joker, I suppose. Not to the extent of like Jimmy Bullard, who I played with at, at West Ham. He was, he took, he took it, he took joking to the extreme. Obviously, I think everyone knows that. Um, but no, you know, I, I was, I'm, a, I think I'm a fair guy. Um, I'm approachable. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> He's gone. Oh dear. <laughs> And 
and he's gone. Oh, and that was the interview with uh, a new assistant manager at Habers Swifts, Omar Ritza. We'll catch up with him uh, soon. I have been assured that he didn't hang up and that uh, we've kind of both got uh, phone problems at the moment and dying batteries. Uh, so, on to tomorrow. It's uh, Thorak versus Habers Swifts. Uh, in Ryman 1 North, kickoff 3pm. And then Boxing Day, it's Habers Swifts versus Moulder and Tiptree. The big local derby, kickoff 1pm. Bye for now.